Hey, Facebook friends and YouTube. This video will be about rebuking. I'm sure some of you are thinking, of course, she would do a video about that. <laughs> but no, it's serious. This is a serious thing and it's part of the Bible. And it's something that is like 100% lacking in our modern church. And I think we need to bring it back. Um, because if nobody ever talks about sin, then what do people know that they need to repent of? Or why would they think that they need to repent if we never really talk about sin? And I love Joel Osteen, but he does need to talk about sin more and about repentance more and turning the other way and what that means. But I was thinking the only church that maybe would do this would be Pentecostal churches, but they rebuke people for the wrong things, like not speaking in tongues or praying in tongues, but that's silly. You don't have to pray in tongues. It can be good, but there are other gifts. But anyways, all right, so rebuking. What does the Bible say about this? Proverbs 27, 5, better is open rebuke than hidden love. Why? Because open rebuke, like if someone is willing to rebuke, that shows that they care. Like if someone is willing to look at you and tell you the truth, that means that they care. People who don't ever say anything or don't ever correct you, they don't care. Like if you're playing sports and you're messing up and your coach doesn't even bother to correct you, then he just doesn't care. Like he just doesn't care about you. But the best players get the most criticism or um, input or like rebuking in a way from their coach because their coach knows that they can do better. They believe in them. You know, they want them to reach their highest potential. <sighs> so that's why the Bible says the Lord disciplines those he loves because he knows that we can do better. All right, 1 Timothy 5.20. <clears throat> For those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all, so that the rest may stand in fear. Well, that's, a, that's a verse I didn't even remember at all, but that is really pretty a hard-hitting verse. So this is Timothy. He was a young pastor. Paul wrote these letters to him to tell him how to be a pastor and how to, you know, help people, help the flock, feed the sheep. He said, for those who persist in sin, rebuke them in the presence of all so that the rest may stand in fear. Yeah, we never do that now. We should probably because it's important. Like I went to a church and I was currently not. I, I went to a church and my pastor was really, really good. He was saying, you know, if you guys think it's okay for you to just be like sleeping with your boyfriend, but then you come to church, like that's not okay. So, you know, we need more of that in the church. Galatians 6.1 says, Brothers, if anyone is caught in any transgression, you who are spiritual should restore him in a spirit of gentleness. Keep watch on yourself, lest you too be tempted. So that one says a spirit of gentleness. So that is important um, overall. Titus 2.15, declare these things, exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. <clears throat> Titus, I think, was another young pastor that Paul wrote a letter to. 2 Timothy 4.2, preach the word, be ready in season and out of season. Repro reprove, rebuke, and exhort with complete patience and teaching. 2 Timothy 3.16, all scripture is breathed out by God and profitable for teaching, for reproof, for correction and for training in righteousness, that the people of God may be competent, equipped for every good work. James 5.20. This one's really good. Let him know that whoever brings back a sinner from his wandering will save his soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. So that is the whole goal of rebuke, is that saving people from, saving their soul from death, from wandering. That's why it's important. <sighs> of course, it's good to love, but sometimes there needs to be tough love and, you know, you need to tell people what they need to hear rather than what they want to hear. That's really more important. And if you really care about someone, you'll tell them more what they need to hear to help them. Proverbs 123, if you turn at my reproof, God says, behold, I will pour out my spirit to you. I will make my words known to you. Proverbs 27, 6, faithful are the wounds of a friend. Profuse are the kisses of an enemy. Or another verse says, like, the wounds of a friend are better than the kisses of an enemy. Like, truth is better than flattery. That's what that means. Luke 17, 3. 
Pay attention to yourselves. If your brother sins, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. Proverbs 29.15 The rod and reproof give wisdom. <clears throat> Hebrews 4.12 The word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and of spirit, of joints and of marrow, and discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. Revelation 3.19 Those whom I love, I reprove and discipline. So be zealous and repent. And I was thinking, like, that is what really stirred up the revival in the first and second Great Awakenings was this fire and brimstone teaching about sin. And, you know, you had, like, Jonathan Edwards. We read his um, his uh, sermon, Sinners in the Hands of an Angry God, when I was in high school. And it really made me think about how much that type of preaching is lacking now, that people never talk about the fear of the Lord or the fear of sin or how serious sin can be. You know, Jesus said, if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. If your eye causes you to sin, gouge it out. Like, that's pretty serious. And so, you know, when people are like, oh, Jesus never talked about homosexuality. Like, well, he did say that, which was pretty serious. Obviously, it was a hyperbole. It was an overstatement. He didn't really mean cut off your hand and gouge out your eye, but he was saying you should take sin that seriously. You know, he says it's better for you to... to uh, live without an eye than to enter, than to go to hell, basically. So, you know, sin is really um, big, and it is it is a big deal, and we shouldn't just be like, oh, whatever. Like, no, it's not whatever. <laughs> but that is the way that our generation now feels about sin. But that's why America is the way that it is, and that's why I think that this video was important. So I pray that this bless you all. God loves you. Have a great day.